it's a little bit later. We're finally getting some snow. Uh, my wife and I, we just got back from a couple mile walk. It was pretty nice. It's icy though. What I really want to show you, I didn't really want to talk about the walk. Who cares about that? Um, what I want to show you was I got protein lined up in the smoker right now. Yeah, you can see the snow coming down, right? Nice little winter wonderland. But the smoke has been sitting out here at a nice 250 for probably three, four hours now. What I have in here, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it too well. I don't have a light on. We got, yeah, you really can't see it that great, but what we have here is a prime roast and this thing is sliced thin i wanted to do it i wanted to really make some premium ass jerky that's exactly what i'm doing this stuff is almost done i got a few different kinds of the meat church uh meat church seasoning blends and i'm looking forward to it so much man it's refreshing to be outside in the cool air i will tell you that uh, but I'm about ready to get back inside. Like I said, we just went on that long walk. It's breezy, snowy. So I'm more than ready to get inside, enjoy the night with my family. And I'm really looking forward to this jerky being finished up. I just wanted to pop on and, you know, talk a little bit about something outside of training. Just let you see a little bit more of my life outside of the gym. I think it's a good direction to go with the vlogs. I think it's kind of leading there. And, uh, this is just a nice start. Have a good night. There's, there's huge value to gaining the experience of being put under a lot of pressure. You know, heavy loads on your back, heavy loads on your arms, elbows, shoulders, knees, hips, all that stuff. There's so much mental benefit to that that it's, it's worth me mentioning. It's, it's worth me talking about it as the second benefit today. That was a hell of an opening set right there. Welcome to winter vlog, day 36. This is pull slash overhead press day, GST size. I'm on week 11 right now. Whew. You ever listen to uh, motivational speeches during your training sessions? Man, I gotta say, they're gonna get you going. They're gonna get you doing the things that you need to do on that day right now. I'm listening to the motivational compilation of just going through it alone, starting alone, going through it alone, finishing it alone. That's exactly how I feel today. Struggling a little bit, but the guy in the earphone right now is just telling me, I don't know who it is, I don't know his name, but he's telling me to invite in the suffering and work through it and build up your character. Every single time you feel like you're suffering, it's an opportunity. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm making today happen and I'm gonna get great sets in. So welcome to Winter Vlog, day 36, like I said. Day motherfucking 36, let's do it.
Oh, so this set, this set is a AMRAP set. Now this is a 70% one rep max week. It's a micro cycle two. I've already done great initial sets. Uh, my initial sets were set at six to 10 reps. I went 10 on both. So I'm, I, uh, you know, I pushed to the upper limit. Now I always try to double the minimal number of the previous sets. So that was six. So I try to double that. I try to go 12 based on those previous sets. You know, it's gonna be a bit of a grinder, but that's how it's supposed to be. Is there really an AMRAP set that's not a grinder? You know, I, I don't think so because it's at as many reps as possible. And you know, that means you gotta grind. No other way around it. So I'm gonna grind to 12. I'm gonna start off kind of fast and uh, I'm, I want 12. You know, I really want 12. Here's the grind part. All right, two more. Ooh. Oh, goddamn. Ah. Ooh. Oh, God, that was definitely a grind, as you can tell. Ooh. Oh, 12. Sometimes it's hard to push yourself when you're solo, but like this video I'm listening to, solo motivation you got to try to push through the stuff and uh you know whatever gets you through the stuff that's how you get through the stuff <laughs> i just got through the stuff right there all right that was my 12 core lift number two coming up remember this is pulse slash ohp day so what's next ohp Damn, that felt focused. There's nothing like really, truly feeling the working muscle groups during an exercise. Whew. Core lift set number two, six to 10. I shouldn't have even said six though, because 10, there's no question. There's no question. 10's coming up here. <clears throat> I wanna remind you though, you can see this angle is not 90 degrees straight up, but this is a shoulder focused press right here. You don't have to have a 90 degree angle on your bench to target your anterior delts. You don't need to do that. Even the medial delts. Use whatever grip you want, wide, close, medium width. It doesn't matter. If you're 60 degrees, 75 degrees, those anterior delts and those medial delts are targeted and they're going to grow. Ooh. 12 reps. I want this shit real bad today. Oh, I got to keep this going, man. I got to keep this moving. Oh, nobody else will do this. Just me. Nobody's coming in here and doing these reps for me. Ah. Oh. Oh, 
Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm pretty sure failure was 13 there. That's fine. 12 in the bag, baby. I can't wait for the next lift. Was a hell of a day on dumbbell rows man okay so i'm out of weight when it comes to those power blocks i don't have any more weight to add for five rep supplement days and this is the first week of the gst size program where five rep supplement lifts kick in by the way and what you want to do when you're transitioning from medium reps like 10 reps to five rep working sets what you want to do is you want to add roughly 25% to those medium rep working weights. That's going to get you your estimated challenging numbers. So as an example, I left off at 102.5 on dumbbell rows, right? That was last week, 102.5s, uh, great sets. So adding 25% to that, all you do is just multiply it by 1.25. And that gives me about 130, you know, 127 and a half. 130 ish right around there the extensions that i have for these power blocks they only go to 120 so i just want to top them out today i knew it was going to be a little bit on the lighter side you saw me doing an extra rep here and there the next time i see this five rep supplement lift scheme i'm gonna have to figure out something different so what i'm probably going to do is figure out something different for the medium rep going forward because i don't want to just have to do something different only on the lower up supplement days if they're not every week they're at a about a 50 they're about at a frequency that's like 50 percent of the medium reps so i don't want to be exercise hopping like that so i'm going to come up with a different single arm or dual arm horizontal row and i'm going to start figuring that out next week um, that's what that's going to be one of the next tasks for this pull overhead press day but these are done these are cooked and in the books 
and it's time for me to get to those reverse grip bench presses. That's a new one I'm bringing in. Brought it in last week. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing. It's five rep. So I'm just gonna add 25% to last week's, last week's medium reps. And it's just another testament to the importance of tracking, journaling, recording your stuff. Otherwise, I would never re uh, remember all these numbers. And I don't expect anybody to. But it's good to know your numbers. You can't do periodization like this without knowing your numbers. <clears throat> let's get focused here. Come on, let's get focused. That felt fucking good. Let's get this shit. not heavy enough. So here's what we got for today's training chat. Today's training chat is gonna be about 
five rep work, the benefit of five rep work, lower rep work in general for your supplement lifts. It's key. Oh, man, it's a, it's a different type of stimulus. And just that alone tells you why you need it. You need different types of stimulus to grow, to strengthen, to make progress. You cannot just rely on one type of stimulus. That's not how it works. If you do that, you're short selling yourself 100%. You're not going to see the benefits that you're capable of seeing. So low rep work. For me, that is six and below. When you're running GST size, it's a five rep scheme. So it's three or four sets by five reps. And it's important. The benefits of low rep work, I'm gonna give you two today, all right? Now, the first one is building up that near maximal strength. There's no question that being stronger uh, in the low rep range is a benefit for you. I kind of said that funny. I should just say, you know, increasing your one rep max, being stronger with weights that are closer to your one rep max, it's beneficial for you. Nobody ever said or nobody ever claimed that being stronger is going to make you smaller. Being able to move more weight, increase your total workload, increase your total volume per session, that shit's important. And so strength is important. While GST size is not a powerlifting prep program, it's not designed to make you the strongest you can possibly be, it still has focus on near maximal strength because I would be stupid if I thought that that was not important at all. It is important. This program is just a size first program. Strength is second though. Strength is right there behind it. Because when you're capable of moving a lot of weight for a low rep scheme, it's gonna make you capable of moving more weight for a medium rep and a high rep scheme. And the benefits of all three of those schemes are important for total growth, for being the biggest that you can possibly freaking be. And that's exactly why I don't leave out the low rep work. So in a nutshell, you know, low rep training makes you stronger in terms of one rep max, three rep max, five rep max. Being stronger in those rep ranges, it allows you to do more work in the other beneficial rep ranges. So that's my number one benefit to, actually not my number one, it's my first benefit that I'm listing out. It's not my number one favorite. It's not the most important. It's the first benefit to low rep training that I wanted to tell you about today. So I'm just gonna do one more. Now the other one is, it's not about physically getting stronger, it's about being able to handle heavier weight and just being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And you could argue that, that this is very similar to the first benefit, but I do think it's different. It's, it's a little bit different aspect of training. It's uh, being able to see bigger weight in front of you, being able to see that bigger challenge right there ahead of you. And knowing that you're comfortable just handling that type of weight, that type of pressure, and you can hold your form, you can stay braced, you're used to it, you know what it feels like. There's, there's huge value to gaining the experience of being put under a lot of pressure, you know, heavy loads on your back heavy loads on your arms, elbows, shoulders, knees, hips, all that stuff. There's so much mental benefit to that, that it's, it's worth me mentioning. It's, it's worth me talking about it as the second benefit today. It's an ego boost. Mentally, it's an ego boost. You see bigger weight on the bar, you lift it. That's an ego boost. There's nothing wrong with that. You should gain confidence, gain some ego from lifting you're literally telling yourself that you can do big things and you're literally showing yourself that you can do, you know, big things. And that's, there's, there's so much value in that. I, I really think there's value in that. And you're not going to be able to do that if you never touch a low rep range because low rep ranges require you to do weight that you're like, yeah, that's like, that's heavy for me. You know, I'm looking at that and I'm going to have to get focused in. I'm going to have to think about what I'm doing 
and I better be really good at this lift, otherwise I'm probably gonna hurt myself. So low rep work, it gives you that experience in that type of, that type of pressure situation. That medium rep and high rep stuff, you know, it's relatively lighter. It's just not gonna give you that. Obviously those rep ranges, the medium rep and the high reps have a ton of value. And I've talked about that in the past and I'll talk about that in the future. But they don't have the same specific benefit of you being able to see weight on the bar that you know is gonna challenge you, that gets you a little bit anxious, a little bit scared. And then you go and you do that weight and the confidence boost that comes from that, the ego, the boost in the ego, that's something that that low rep range gives you and that's something that you can only get from that low rep range. So those are the two benefits of low rep training that I felt like talking about today. There are more. This is a low rep week. This is day one of this week. So expect to hear more benefits of this low rep range in maybe the next training chat, maybe uh, the next two. I'm not sure. You know, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna talk about next. But I'm gonna touch on low rep benefits. You can, you can be promised that. I'm gonna shut this down right now because I'm actually looking at my screen, my little viewfinder, and I can see the battery is at uh, sub 1%. So I don't want this to get cut off. This was a great training day. Heavy weight, you should feel like you got hit by a train when you're done. I have that going on a little bit and I can't wait to get my calories, my macros in. Um, that's it. You have a good one.